Oh, after the break, uh, we are uh, now here with uh, Professor Hida from UCLA. He's going to talk about, well, there's a short title, uh, Local P in Decomposability. Uh, I, I had a longer title, the P local in the composability of non-CM modular p Galois representations and the structure of Hecke algebras. All okay, right. thank you. So, okay, let me start with a uh, cusp form F. You can see it well. Uh, this is the cusp form. Weight K. And of course, it's a Hecke eigen form. Modi elliptic modular. And of course, as you know, the, you have an associated Galois representation, you pick up line P, then you have an absolute Galois group into GL2 of QP bar. Of course, this factor through uh, the L2 of some discrete variation ring. So the A is the periodic DBR, and it's a residual field. I call it F. So this is a finite extension of FP. So you take rho bar, the, this is a rho fp modulo maximal ideal of a, then you get a Galois representation into GL2 of finite field. I all the time assume uh, this rho fp restricted to decomposition, P decomposition group is upper triangular, so the epsilon F, zero delta F, UF. So the UF is a one core cycle, as you know, so the DP having values in one dimensional space on which the character is given by delta F inverse, something like that, this one core cycle. And um, so this is the setting, and I like to know this course cycle. In other words, the uh, question is when this course cycle UF is non-trivial. Of course, uh, UF having values in P finite modules, so uh, you can just restrict, I mean, Frobenius is usually uh, semi-simple, so you can restrict it to the wild inertia group inside the usual inertia group, and uh, um, nothing you lose. So I usually consider over the wild inertia group, this kind of things. Um, there's a conjecture Maybe I would Greenberg's conjecture. Um, he noticed this, uh, observed this kind of things uh, in the 90s that this rho FP is decomposable. Well, same thing, but non split over I as long as weight is bigger than two and F is non CM. So it's not the induced representation from an imaginary quadratic field. So this is something I like to study. Okay, so uh, I start with some sort of survey of known facts and then going into the uh, some new examples. Uh, 
of this kind of indecomposability. And so um, easiest cases, of course, so I start from sub A. Easiest case is, of course, uh, the F is associated to an analytic curve. So F has coefficients in Z, the integer ring, or slightly more generally, uh, E is defined over number field K. So um, idea, this is due to Sarah, but uh, uh, the idea, you, rest, you, you extend scalar. So I, I pick a prime P, Gothic P capital of K. Um, you extend scalar to uh, with vector ring of coefficient in FP bar, so the maximal and ramified discrete variation ring complete, and you cut it uh, to that I call it E bar, and you start geometrically deforming it. So the deformation space is just a made of a lytic curve over the sweet vector ring, such that you cut it at special fiber, then you recover E bar. And of course, it's up to isomorphism. And um, uh, as you know, by Sayer Tate, this is um, sort of one line. M is a maximal ideal with vector sort of dimension one line, a uh, maximal ideal. So, Picture is something like, so this is one plus M. Of course, you can regard it as a formal group, multiplicative formal group of evaluated at this with vector ring, and you have an origin one. And uh, this one carries a CM elliptic curve. So, um, having CM by an order of imaginary quadratic field, important point maximal at P. So in this deformation space, there's a unique elliptic curve sitting on the center point uh, which has complex multiplication by an order maximal at P. Okay, so slightly more generally that I have a, so the relation to Gerard representation is of course you pick a Tate module of E, so this is of course the P square, and on which the Galois representation of elliptic curve act, and you restrict it to the composition group as usual, it becomes epsilon E, zero delta E. I assume that this is the case. So um, uh, this means good ordinary reduction. I all the time assume this condition. Okay, the UE, this epsilon E, it's a elliptic curve. You restrict it to the wild inertia. It is a cyclotomic character, periodic cyclotomic character. So you E, you take modulo P to the N, then you get uh, the, the value has value, the value of this cocycle is in the P power roots of unity. Right? So, by Kuma theory, this corresponds to a p to the nth roots of one plus m, I mean one unit. And you pass to the limit
you get to U. And the point here is that this E corresponds to this U. Uh, and this is how things go. Therefore, if E does not have complex multiplication, it's sitting somewhere here, and this U is non-zero, and this means uh, UE, the cost cycle is non-zero. Right? This is the observation of Sayer long, long ago. There's not much progress afterwards, it's something in the 60s, but uh, 1960s. Um, now you can do this for a medium variety. Of GL2 type. Say A. So it is defined over number field K. And um, GL2 type means that you consider endomorphism of a medium variety, but absolute endomorphism extends scalar to Q bar. And then this is an integer ring. of another number field. And the R2 condition is, of course, you know, the, this degree of the field. So the rank, Z rank of this O is equal to dimension of A. Okay, so uh, you pick any prime P, Gothic P, lowercase, of O, then you consider the Tate module of A, Gothic P, added Tate module. You have a, so this is by our definition of P, the completion square. And so you, you have a two dimensional representation of Gothic P. Up to here, it's quite the same, and you can think of the geometric deformation space of A. So this is actually by a Sayer Tate again, uh, one plus M, but you need to have an input of O, the endomorphism, so you need to tensor O. This is just a product of a Gothic P dividing P of one plus M, tensor over now ZP of O Gothic P. So here's a, a problem. Uh, for example, they say your field of fraction of O is a real quadratic field. And P splits into two pieces. Then the deformation space is two dimensional. And therefore you have a picture, it's something like that. You have one here, the origin, and you have a P called Gothic P coordinate and P conjugate coordinate. Okay, so this is the CM guy, unique CM guy, having multiplication, CM multiplication um, by an order maximal at P. Uh, but you could have your abelian varieties on one of the axes, say Gothic P coordinate is trivial, okay? Under these circumstances, A is non CM, but rho P split. So you have a trouble. So this kind of things never happen when A is defined over a number field that you need to show. And this took some time. And actually I came up an idea about seven years ago. And um, uh, this is actually, uh, you can regard this as a infinitesimal neighborhood of A inside the Hilbert modular similar variety. Uh, 
okay? And uh, I found that this, um, this axis, so this is a punch line, the axis are essentially rational with respect to this similar variety structure. Well, it's not exactly rational, but it's sort of infinitesimal. It was tangentially rational. So you move around the prime, then you hit the um, inert prime, then basically one dimensional and uh, you win. So here's a theorem. So this is, uh, I wrote a paper in general American Mass Society 2013, and my student, Zhao Win, uh, the Annals Run Institute, Fulgi, 2014. Um, so, low P under the circumstances of a Vidian variety of GL2 type is non split as long as. A non CM. I proved this for um, when the endomorphism is totally real and P is unramified in the field of definition and also in the endomorphism. Uh, Zhao removed all the conditions and extended it to the um, general abelian variety of GL2 type. So here's a corollary. So this is a Jaws theorem that when the weight is two and F non CM, then by I cross similar theory, the um, Gerard representation is actually realized on abelian, similar to the variety of GL2 type. So therefore you apply this and rho fp non split. So this is unconditional. So now the question is how about I wait. I use geometric deformation theory to study weight two form, but um, um, for higher weight, what you can do is perhaps only Gara deformation theory. So higher weight form, you can approximate by weight two form and somehow you try to get something, okay? So let me just explain this point slightly. Here I need to assume, you remember that rho bar restricted to dp is uh, epsilon bar zero delta bar u bar. And of course, if u bar the cost cycle modulo maximal ideal is non zero, then obviously uf is non zero. So you can assume, so we assume without Using generality that the u bar is zero. That means if you take Q and splitting field of rho bar, F rho bar, so it's Q bar fixed by kernel of rho bar. So this is a tamely ramified P tame, right? So u bar is, if non zero, it is the wild part. So this I assume, and further, I assume to have a good deform, uh, Gara deformation theory epsilon bar is different from rho bar. So this condition enforced. Okay. So under these circumstances, the now deformation functor 
over D. Now this is a complete local W algebra. Now W is just a finite sort of extension of ZP. So this is this capital F is a coefficient field of Rova and it's with vector one. Into set. So the you plug in uh, ring A, it's not a no longer a Abelian variety. Then you have a Galois representation. Uh, I, I need to explain slightly more which Galois group I take. For simplicity, I assume that the splitting field of here anything can ramify. But over that, I take F, this is a maximal P profinite extension of F row bar. And ramified outside P. So over this finite ramification, that anything can ramify, but after that, I suppose only P ramify. So I kick out something like elliptic curve, which has multiplicative reduction at some prime outside P, kind of thing. And if I do allow such, then it, it gets more complicated. So I just write this to be Gala group round G. So this round G Gala group into GL2 of A, such that rho maximal ideal, rho modulo maximal ideal of A is rho bar. And of course, rho less to dp is a part right under. So this is the ordinary deformation part. So this, under this condition uh, of p distinguishedness, um, this is representable. So this you have, uh, you can write this as the CL form of universal ring to A. And I assume further that this is actually universal ring is given by Heck algebra. So I assume R equal T theorem. Of course, as you know, from the time of Taylor and the virus, and nowadays this is true, most cases, but um, this is, I assume, okay? So this tells you that T is reduced, no new radical, and the free of finite rank Over lambda. Lambda is a sub algebra. Um, you see, so the you have a row T, the universal representation. Sorry, there, there's a question in the chat. Uh, Ariel asks, is the A model equivalence relations or the frame deformation? Yeah, I forgot to. Uh, this is not a frame deformation, it's just a conjugation by element of GL2A. So it's a modulo, uh, of course, up to isomorphism. Thank you. Thank you. OK. So this triangular shape is uh, up, upper triangular of the decomposition group, and this part are ramified. Not a frame thing. OK. So if you do frame deformation, perhaps you can remove some condition, but I need to do very um, subtle arguments. So I, I don't know at this moment. Okay, so I have this uh, universal. 
jet and you pick say lambda here, the homomorphism and bring it to the low lambda uh, the specialization. So this is the isomorphism uh, between the algebra homomorphisms and the uh, deformations. Okay. So out of that, so you have a universal, this is universal in that sense. Um, if you start from universal object and do some sort of algebraic maneuver, you usually get a lab universal object. Indeed, for example, if you take determinant of rho t, then this is a universal character deforming the dominant robot. Then, um, so, because this is rho t is as usual uh, the upper triangular uh, over the decomposition group. This is unramified. So the epsilon restricted to inertia factor through the Gara group of uh, cyclotomic extension like this. So this is ZP cross and you can project down to one unit, one plus P ZP. So the ZP extension part, I call it gamma. So this is generated by one plus P to the ZP. There's a logical cycle. Um, so this epsilon T, so the Iwasawa algebra is just a simple algebra or something like a power series ring of one variable. The variable is capital T. So you plug in uh, inertia while the inertia element corresponding to this generator, then this is small t, that is one plus capital T. Okay, so this is, this gives algebra structure of T over lambda, and uh, T is free of finite rank over lambda. Okay, so here's a local one generator theorem. That I talk about. Um, so in a million variety case, we use the CRT coordinate and that gives exact shape of uh, this image of the um, image of the one core cycle over the wild inertia. And uh, um, we need something like that for this row T, the, the universal representation. So that I try to uh, explain. And uh, so I, I row T, I plug in this uh, wild inertia. Then because of this uh, delta T unramified, so this is unramified. Therefore, and here, of course, T to the ZP show up, which everything factor through the gamma, zero, one, and you have a unipotent part. This unipotent part is kind of important, obviously. So you going into the image and get out to T to the ZP. This is exact. Okay, this U is our Iwasawa module, first of all. You have this T001 axon, so it's 
gives rise to a lambda module structure. You have a Frobenius acting. I call it phi and I normalize it so that you can normalize it so that it is something like a zero a inverse zero. Okay, so this A is an element of T and by conjugation, it acts on the right shoulder. So uh, this action gives rise to lambda, you add A square module. This is of course inside your ring T. So this is a finite extension of lambda. It's a one generator. Then, you have one more action that you have, of course, epsilon bar zero zero delta bar. Well, strictly speaking, I take tai Hinlar lift. Epsilon zero zero delta. So the epsilon delta inverse act. Right, so the, I, I write W hereafter, the subalgebra of QP bar generated by epsilon delta inverse, generated by values of epsilon delta inverse. So it's slightly smaller than WF, possibly, but I just squeeze a slightly uh, the ring. So, all this combined, U is W double bracket T A square module. So hereafter, I just write lambda for W double bracket T for simplicity. Okay, I I, I could have put W as a subscript, but that's cumbersome. So um. All right, so this is a lambda mode. Long ago, this is a one generator theorem and this is due to essentially your server. Um, of course, at that time, um, his another paper, famous paper on zero extension, zero extension, uh, but uh, he didn't know about the roti and so on, but that tells you that this U is actually generated by one element over this lambda bracket a square for some theta in t. Okay. I mentioned so this is, uh, you get some specific element theta. This is sort of generalization of theta tate coordinate. Of course, it's interpolate theta tate coordinate for each abelian variety, which gives rise to the Galois deformation of the robot. Okay, so um, the, if I, so I have a spectrum of T, and I just can write spectrum of T into two pieces, the M part, spectrum of T, non CM part. This is just a union of CM irreducible component. In other words, rho t projected to TCM is an induced representation from an imaginary quadratic. And uh, this is the last other irreducible component. Um, of course, usually spectral t itself is t non CM if the rho bar is not induced from the um, imaginary quadratic field. So first of all, of course, theta projected to TCM is zero because it is induced. So uh, 
uh, in this case, P splits into two pieces in the imaginary quadratic field. So this implies theta living in T non CA. And Jao's theorem all the way to two point of T non CM, the theta the project down to such a non uh, with two points, it's non zero. So it's quite highly non zero. Tells you that theta is a non zero divisor. T non CM. This is reduced to it. So you get a theorem. For almost point of spectrum of T non CM, you evaluated it at QP bar. The Rho lambda the Galois representation lambda carries, so it's a lambda component rho t. It's non split. The point here is that non zero divisor only has finitely many zeros via stress preparation theory. So this is what you get out of weight two sen. Okay. Um, this type of thing, for example, if residual representation low bar is uh, induced from imaginary quadratic field, we got it and the Vata actually show this fact, but this my, my result is true for without any condition. All right, uh, of course, deformation functor has to exist. So low bar absolutely reducible and uh, two characters are distinct. Okay. So um, now I like to give one uh, theorem, global one generator theorem. It's a kind of global version of local thing, but um, um, that tells you some new example of indecomposability without any condition. Um, so I have this Q, I, I consider a joint row bar. This is a GALA group into GL automorphism group of real algebra of SL2 coefficients with coefficients in there. Of course, action is X, the real algebra element goes to its adjoint action. So the conjugation, three dimensional. So I have a splitting field of this adjoint It, it, it could be slightly smaller than the row bar. And I have this F, and this is the Galois group G. Well, if I have some middle field here, I just write this Galois group GM. Okay. So now it's a funny theorem I'm telling you. I consider the class group of F splitting field by join. This is a finite extension and this Galois group G, finite. So the Galois group acts. So I take a joint isotypical component okay. So here's a theorem, global one generator theorem. 
Um, suppose this isotypical component trivial and one more condition epsilon bar delta bar inverse is not equal cyclotomic character module P. In other words, no roots of unity locally. No P roots of unity locally. Then the, the universal ring, so the number of generators of t over lambda is less than equal to one. Okay, I have still 20 minutes or something. I try to explain why. So this number, I call it r. By general nonsense, this r is equal to the dimension of F of a joint cell R. Okay, so this is general fact. Cell R group is something like, so this is over Q. So cell R group over M, M is in the middle field. I mentioned here intermediate extension. It's just a kernel of H1 of this Galois group, a joint to body Galois cohomology into the product of P dividing P of prime of capital M of H1 of D, the decomposition group of M of this joint modulo H1 no. uh, filtration, the whole state filtration component, I call it H plus minus, something like that. Here, this guy is spanned by one core cycles upper near potent over inertia group and upper triangular over decomposition group. Important condition is the first one. Usually, um, the second one follows from the first, but sometimes not. So I just put these two. And of course, this D Gothic P over that, Roba may not be upper triangular, but it is upper triangular up to conjugation. So this, this notion is upper triangular and so on is up to conjugation. Okay, so why this theorem true? I, I, I want to know the dimension of Selma group over Q. So I, Therma core cycle, I restrict it to uh, Therma group over F, splitting field of a joint row bar. And capital G is Galois group of this finite stage. And it is quite well known that a joint row bar is zero for H1. For any case, so uh, by inflation restriction, you can embed it a joint row bar 
fixed by G. And there's a inside of uh, this restriction, there's a uh, every Fourier unramified cool cycle. And it gets out P ramified cool cycle. And by cross field, the theory inertia group is basically OP. So I, I, I write this O integer ring. OP is O tensor ZP, so the periodic completion. And O cross hat adjoint over. Okay. So this is something question mark. O cross hat P is P profinite completion. So I can write this as okay. And I assumed that this is zero, right? The isotopic component is trivial. So I need to compute this side and a uh, ramified side. But low bar is epsilon bar zero zero delta bar. So it's a P tain. And you know well that this is actually as a Galois module induced representation from trivial module. So this is ZP the group algebra. So you have, this is uh, by Shapiro's lemma, you lose Galois action, so home ZP of ZP of a joint number. So I have a map here. Okay, so pi, of this serma of F fixed by Z is the ramified cross cycle. So it has to be inside the upper near potent element, upper near potent re sub algebra of SL2, and this has dimension one. So this is the proof. And uh, um, I said that H1 of capital G here vanishes, but H2 not. This is very special for a joint. So this is injection, but may not be subjection. Okay, so this is kind of difficult here. Um, Therefore, T is generated by one element over theta, often. And actually, I just give an example. So I take art in representation. So this is has form f of weight one. In particular, I just suppose uh, induced representation from real quadratic field of a character. And the phi bar is phi modulo maximal idea. So the low bar And I assume that this is uh, a lift, usually true. Okay. Under these circumstances, interesting things happen. A joint of law, as you know, is alpha direct sum and induced care. It's not irreducible. 
there's another character I call it phi minus, anti-cyclotomic projection of phi. I don't need the exact form phi minus, but alpha is a quadratic residue symbol corresponding to this quadratic field. And um, interesting point is that this row bar, you tensor alpha by Maki, it is a small peak to row bar, right? Induced representation. So the universal representation, the tensite, it's returned to the original position because Residually, it doesn't change. So you have a involution iota. Of course, this tensile quadrative character doesn't change the determinant. So it is over lambda. Okay. And um, say you pick gas form G. Higher weight, so rho GP is in the, say, W. Weight bigger than two, then the rho GP tensor alpha is not a small fifth to rho GP because it's real quadratic. Only theta series from real quadratic is of weight one. Okay, therefore, iota is non-trivia. So you have something fine lambda. You have T plus. This is fixed by involution subalgebra. And T, that is lambda over theta. Okay. This I don't use any real condition. Uh, so uh, this is true without any assumption. So, uh, uh, of course, this, this one generator thing may not be all the time true, but uh, number of generators is bigger than one or equal to one. And it is under our condition, it is less than one. So the R is usually one under uh, my assumptions. All that time. Okay, here's a theorem. I almost run out of time. I may just state the theorem and perhaps sketch a little bit of the proof. Number one. So, uh, oh, before going to theorem, I need to explain one more notation. I have an integer ring. Now I write all for the integer ring of this real quadratic field. Okay. Then there I have a fundamental unit. And this goes into it's, I suppose now to have a naturally sort of ordinary, I suppose, P split in Q squared root of D. This is a assumption I make. So all, all my what I said is under this assumption, sorry, I forgot. So I have it's, so this is ZP. So epsilon here goes to epsilon here and you project it to gamma, so bracket epsilon, and this is in lambda, okay? Then the theorem tells you Number one, the local US server's theta, local one generator theorem, consider its ideal, it's divide this epsilon minus one in T. In this case, T is equal to T non CM. Okay. Secondly, 
ok? This epsilon here you consider, so the, if I consider the class group of Q square root of D, but you allow ramification to the half of it. For simplicity, if I suppose the class number of HF is trivial, uh, and not trivial, P doesn't divide class number, so this of course implies class number P doesn't divide subfield of class number of Q square root of D. So this is just uh, OP cross over epsilon to the Z bar plus minus closure. And I take its P profinite completion then by my uh, projection to P profinite gamma, it is gamma generated by bracket epsilon VP, right? So if I write order, cosic order of epsilon minus, or maybe I can raise P to the minus first power because I can project down to gamma. If I write this is M plus one, so this is gamma about gamma p to the m. What I wanted to say is that prime factor of epsilon minus one in lambda, the p is generated by t minus zeta, zeta p to the m equal one. So this is a weight one prime. Okay, so um, the second condition tells you that this low GP, whatever you pick G of higher weight, deforming this induced representation is non-split. If weight is bigger than it. Third condition is that if uh, P doesn't divide HF, then the local generator and the global generator is the same. I run out of time, so perhaps I don't, I can't do much, but the one thing I would note is in a couple of minutes is that you remember low bar tensor alpha isomorphic to rho bar. But if you just write rho bar in the usual matrix form of induced representation, you just multiply alpha, then this is one minus one rho bar, one minus one inverse, something like that. And this stupid fact tells you that rho t, you can arrange rho t so that over the Galois group of this Q square root of D, so Q alpha, then it has values in funny way, D plus, D minus, D plus, D minus, D plus. This is sort of generalized matrix algebra representation. It has values like that. And, um, T minus is, of course, T, of which iota act of minus one. So it is theta, you can assume, theta is a generator, so the theta, iota, theta, is just a minus theta, it's something like that. So, and um, uh, the rho T, I, is d to the zp theta times lambda a square one zero so this theta is in t minus in other words this is theta big theta times t plus theta is big theta times some u and the key point uh, Basically, I prove is that 
This guy is essentially unit. Using a class group condition. And uh, that is the story. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for the speaker? If there are no more questions, we can thank the speaker again. Thank you.